Hello everyone and welcome to another rapid revision video. This time we're focusing on the work of Thomas Sydenham and we're going to cover three things. Sydenham's career, Sydenham's methods and the significance or importance of Sydenham's work. First let's look at Sydenham's career. Here are the key points. As a young doctor, his education and training was interrupted by the English Civil War in the 1640s. He had to leave his study at university and went to become a soldier in the army. And this is one reason why Sydenham took a much more practical approach to disease than other doctors. By the 1660s, he was an influential physician working in London. And that meant that he was doing his work at a time when scientific learning was very fashionable. For example, the Royal Society had been founded. This probably encouraged Sydenham to take a more scientific approach too. He published his major textbook, which was called Observations on Medicine in 1676. And he was nicknamed the English Hippocrates, because he used very similar methods of observation to the great Greek doctor, Hippocrates. Now let's look at Sydenham's methods. The key point here is that Sydenham took a much more scientific approach to disease than other physicians. So before Sydenham, other physicians believed that patients' diseases were personal to them caused by things inside the patient, like their humours, diet and lifestyle. Many physicians learned about disease only by book learning instead of studying diseases for themselves. Physicians rarely saw their patients in person and they diagnosed their patients from a distance, looking at samples and looking up symptoms in books. Physicians usually treated each symptom separately rather than treating the disease as a whole and physicians often used harsh treatments like purging and bloodletting. Sydenham changed a lot of this. He said that diseases came from outside the body, so he rejected the four humours theory. He diagnosed his patients by observing them in person himself, and he observed and recorded his patients' symptoms closely. We call this clinical observation, for example, checking their patient's pulse. He studied, classified and wrote detailed descriptions of diseases, including the first ever descriptions of scarlet fever. And he treated diseases as a whole, not separate symptoms. Finally, he used mild treatments. Unlike other physicians, he preferred to use good food, rest and mild herbal remedies instead of harsh treatments like bloodletting and purging. Now let's think about the significance of Sydenham's work. In some ways, his work was very, very important. It was much more practical than other doctors, and so it helped to shift doctors away from just book learning to use more practical methods. His clinical observation helped doctors to diagnose their patients more effectively, and actually it's still used today by doctors when observing and diagnosing patients. Observation, recording and classifying diseases all helped to improve doctors' medical knowledge. They learned much more about disease and how disease develops. And his textbook became a key text for medical students. It was used widely in universities to train doctors. His work also helped to shift doctors away from the four humours theory and the treatment of opposites. And in fact, his gentle remedies really did work including laudanum, which was a very effective gentle painkiller, and cinchona bark, which worked well on malaria. However, there are some limitations to his importance. He was not the first doctor to question the four humours theory. Other doctors like Paracelsus and Fracastoro had already done this. His work was not accepted immediately by all and took some time for older established physicians to accept. And although he was correct that disease comes from outside the body, he was never actually able to identify where it comes from. This is because he could not study germs closely. At that point, microscopes were not sufficiently developed. So Sydenham's work was important to an extent. 
thanks for watching this rapid revision video. Here are three ways you can follow up and take your revision a little further. Don't forget there are lots of other revision videos on our YouTube channel.